Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. Also, thank you to all the KiCad.info folks out there. Uh, this is for you as well. Today, what we're going to do is actually blow up the numbers on the existing Bench Buddy. So, Bench Buddy is the uh, it's the project that we did as part of session one of Contextual Electronics. What we're going to do is actually clone that from GitHub, uh, and then go and actually change all of the numbers on the diagram. Okay, so let's do that first. So, I use I've started using the uh, Git Bash. I'm on Windows, so uh, what I'm going to do is actually do git clone, and then I'm going to grab from here, which is the bench buddy page. You can see up here, this is the bench buddy page. Uh, I'm going to grab the clone URL and then paste this. Pasting on this is always weird, but so I'm going to clone that. I put in my SSH. Oopsies, that might not work. Let's see. Did that do it? Yep, yep, there we go. So it's cloning into there. Now what I'm going to do, this is my existing uh, BenchBuddy project. I'm going to go and open this one instead. Okay, now you see this one's here. It's still, still finishing. You can see it's it's uh, still downloading there. And what is, this is going to do is basically give us an entirely new uh, version of the BenchBuddy that I can play with without any worries. Because now, even if I go, I could either create a branch, I could, you know, do a whole bunch of different things. But basically, what I can do is pull in all of this information and mess with it and not worry about it. And that's kind of the benefit of working with Git. Not to mention the sharing aspects and everything else. I guess I should have looked to see how big this was. <laughs> it must be pulling in other files. Uh, so what we're going to do though is end up going. Man, that's big. Uh, so this is not the way to do a git file. You should definitely have a smaller git object thing. I'm guessing there's other things in there. If we look at the actual... Uh, yep. Well, you know what? I'll just pause it, and then when it's done, I'll come back to that. There we go. Time warp. Uh, okay, so now you can see all of this stuff is in here. I'm guessing it was these other files that I stored with all of that. But anyways, here's the project. Let's open that up. Okay, if we open up the project here. Again, anyone can do this. It's an open source project. You can go and pull this down yourself if you'd like to. Uh, okay, so now if we go into the actual sheet here. Let's go into sheet, whatever this is. This is the uh, this is the fan controller section. See, it's sheet 9. What we're going to do is actually this was uh, inspired by the Spark Gap podcast. They were talking about uh, layout and how you know how to actually group this stuff and i was thinking about how we actually did it in the course and we didn't do what they were talking about so i thought well we should probably go back through and redo it okay so you see right here uh all of the parts are basically numbered in terms of uh order of sheets and everything else like that basically how the parts were ordered uh kind of as parts were added to the sheets they got these new annotation numbers right so u5 was you know, this was U4, so then this one was probably added before U5, that kind of thing. And then same thing here, R15, R61. All of these don't really say much other than this is the 61st, 62nd, and 63rd component or resistor on the sheet. So what we're going to do is actually go in and blow up the existing uh, annotation. So I'm going to do uh, reset, which will definitely blow that up. Uh, this is the setting it. Uh, by Y position, so as it rasters across, it'll say one, two, three, four, as it finds um, new components. But the thing we're really going to do is say st uh, start to sheet number times, or you know, the sheet number, and then start numbering stuff. And you get up to a hundred per sheet. Now you could do a thousand, but I know I know for a fact that we don't have a thousand components per sheet, so that's fine. So we're going to hit annotate. It's going to ask us if we actually want to be doing that because this is pretty detrimental. And now we see. This is sheet six, right? When we saw that before, sheet six. And now we see all of the components have been renamed as they appear on the sheet, right? So this this up here is capacitor one, right? And as if we go down, see this is three, so that means there's probably another capacitor over here. See, uh, basically going left to right. And then same thing here, 601, U601, this will be, now the, the reason this one is U201 is that you see that this is actually a multi-part component. The A component is likely on sheet two, and we can go and verify that kind of thing. So if we leave the sheet, uh, I believe it's this one, is sheet two. Yeah, so this is sheet two down here. And then you see that the rest of them are on here. So it basically said, well, this is mostly on sheet two. Now, the reason to do something like this is actually because of the grouping when you go and move a schematic over into your layout. Now it, 
it uh, it is a bit linear, right? So if you actually go back and need to redo stuff and move stuff sheet to sheet, you can really start to get messed up a little bit. But as a general rule, I think it's actually pretty useful. Now, uh, what we need to do is actually go and wipe out everything in this project. Now, again, we can reset it because of Git. But what we're going to do is save this to the netlist, right? Because we need to. We need to go and uh, wipe out the existing netlist. So we're going to save the netlist, right? We're going to write over what's there. Again, this is the uh, GitHub version, so it should be okay. We're going to hopefully, hopefully all of the, I, be, I had back annotated this project in the past, right? So all of the footprint information is stored with the components here. So hopefully that will get maintained as I go into the CVPCB. And it looks like it was. So even though we have new, you know, C5 or whatever, we see that all of the footprints are still maintained, which is actually really good because we wouldn't want to do that otherwise. So now if we go over into PCB new, now this is actually all the same as well. You see that these are still R37, yada, yada, yada. Now if if we wanted to say, I actually don't know how to update the numbers if we did this kind of thing. What we actually have to do is, well, we have to wipe it out. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm gonna not draw it while I move it, but I'm gonna right click, uh, delete block, delete block, there we go. And then I'm going to go and uh, pull in the net list again read current netlist and then I'm going to there we go uh, it's still some errors but not too many now we see all of the components have been reimported all of my hard work is gone uh, <laughs> uh, but now I'm gonna move all of these components so I go uh, to footprint mode right click glob move in place move all modules this will space them all out which is good and now if we look at the components I'm going to turn off netlist, or sorry, rat's nest rather. Now if we look at the components, the nice thing about this, and the reason to do this in the first place, is now when we look at this big mass of components, usually it's like, well, what's connected to what? And then you kind of start grouping. The nice thing about this is that I know, oh, look, these two components right here are part of sheet two, right? And now I can go and find the capacitor that's part of sheet two. Oh, well, here we got resistor from sheet two. Uh, what else we got? So other stuff from sheet two here, right? And we could start picking out what's actually part of the different pages because really if we go back to the schematic, that's the reason I was doing it in the first place, right? I actually had grouped all this stuff together because I want this stuff all together, right? And if we look at the pages in general, I probably want all of this stuff in the general same area. Even even looking at the uh, this uh, Arduino sheet, right? I actually put all of these resistors on this page because you know, I could have put these anywhere really, but I put them all here because I wanted them to be near uh, that other footprint. So actually it ends up being this really nice logical way of separating things out. And then when you move to the layout, that's ultimately what, what it's really good for is trying to start gathering things together by page because I set it up like that in the first place. Again, the benefit of hierarchical design, which we cover in other videos. So I'm going to go back and uh, <laughs> wipe out all these changes because uh, I can from GitHub. But this is hopefully a, a good way to kind of, I think in future in future projects, future contextual electronics videos, uh, you know, we'll definitely be doing this method as well. But uh, for now, thanks for watching.